Welcome back to the 3D open world series in five minutes. You guys know the drill. We jump straight in so I don't waste any of your time. And in return, you guys better click that damn subscribe button and noti button immediately. Let's start where we left off. We're gonna start the clock right now, five minutes and counting. A lot of you have complained in the comments about trees not touching the ground, and I just wanna say I'm sorry. I accidentally selected the wrong prefab in part one, but also let's thank Omelet2718 for catching this. To fix this, we can go into our terrain, go to paint trees, select our tree, and then click edit trees, remove tree. Next, let's add our new tree by selecting edit trees, add tree. Then this time we want to select the prefab and be careful to select PT pine tree 03 underscore green all of our trees have been removed from the scene so let's replace them by clicking mass place trees now we can see that there no longer are any gaps between the terrain surface and the base of the tree and additionally this also fixed the wind effect on the trees because they no longer all sway in the exact same direction there's another problem in our scene we can still walk straight through all of our trees so let's add in some colliders select your terrain and click the leftmost option named create neighbor terrain and at the bottom just make sure that enable tree colliders is actually selected step two is adding the collider to our prefab so go back to the paint trees select your tree click edit then click on the prefab to highlight it in your project files Double click the prefab so it shows up in your scene. Now click on the first child game object with the ending LOD0, then in the inspector add a component and select capsule collider. Click on edit collider then manually adjust it in the scene view by pulling on the edges and once you're happy, return to the scene view and test it out. Now you can see we no longer just run straight through the trees. Unfortunately though, we have another problem. When we replaced our trees, some of them spawned in the water. This is super annoying when using mass place trees, so we're gonna edit our first script of the entire series so I can show you how to automatically remove these trees. Right click your assets folder and create a new folder naming it scripts. Next, right click our scripts folder and we're gonna create two C sharp scripts. Name the first one, remove underwater trees, then create create another and name it remove underwater trees editor. Double click the first one to open Visual Studio. Now I'm not going to be explaining every line so take extra time and pause if you need it. I will explain chunks of the code but remember I put these scripts in the description if you'd rather just copy them instead of writing all the lines yourself. Let's add two fields at the top to store our terrain and our water height data. Now we'll add in a function named remove trees underwater. The next three lines get an array of all of the trees on our terrain. Then we loop through each individual tree using a for each loop and check if the position of the tree is above the water level. If it is, then we add it to our updated tree list. Then at the end, we set the terrain tree instance data to our updated list of trees. That's it for this script. Let's go back to Unity and compile. Next, create a game object in your hierarchy named remove trees and add the script as a component to the game object. Make sure you drag the terrain from your hierarchy into the terrain for the script and then set your water level manually. For me, 24 happens to be a good value, but you'll have to play around with this. Now we need a convenient way to remove trees on demand. So we're gonna make one more short script to help us out with that. Open up remove underwater trees editor and at the top, make sure you type using Unity editor and then then we're going to add this line telling Unity we're making a custom editor. We override this function named onInspectorGUI so that we can add in our own draw call to Unity's editor. We get a reference to our remove underwater tree script and then we can actually create our own button named remove underwater trees. Finally, when we click that button, we tell Unity to run our remove trees underwater function. Save your script and now we're going to see something amazing. If you click on your remove trees game object, you'll notice there's now a button that's appeared underneath the script. Now we can simply just click it and it removes all of the trees below your water level. Using editor functions is truly powerful and can create some really efficient workflows. Let's switch into the wide scene view for the next part. I want to talk about LOD groups and their effects on trees in the scene. You'll see that when I adjust the tree distance in billboard parameters on our terrain, they actually no longer affect the trees in our scene. So why is this? Well, let's open up the prefab to find out. Go to your trees tab, select your tree, click edit tree, then click on the prefab to highlight the tree prefab in your project files. Double click the tree prefab to open it up in the scene. Each tree has a level of detail or LOD group component attached to it. Each LOD object has less details, so they take up less resources on the computer, meaning we'll get better performance. We can adjust when each of these LOD groups is the active, visible object by dragging their values in the LOD group. Another cool thing, if you scroll out, Unity actually tells you which LOD group is currently active, and at the furthest distance, the tree is called 
which means it completely disappears and is no longer rendered at all. LOD groups can be used to precisely control performance, so I'm going to make a few adjustments here, then I'll show you the effect in the scene view. Now you can already see there are fewer trees showing up compared to before, but if I adjust the cold group to be further away, you see more trees are now visible. And one final trick is to go into your game view and adjust the LOD groups until you're happy with the result. That's it for part three. I know it might feel like we didn't cover too much, but using scripts in the way that we did is going to help us a ton in the long run. The good news is I am going to be releasing part four in just a few days. So if you were hoping for more, there is going to be more coming very soon. Comment what you guys want to see below in part four, and I'll try my best to get to it. Peace.